you know, coalition politics is, is messy in general in a young democracy. You know, change management, you don't do it overnight. So, so there are some good people in the ANC. Joining us on the State of the Nation today, we've got one of the most exciting political voices in South Africa, and that is uh, the mayor from KZN that everybody knows and loves uh, from the DA, Chris Pappas. Chris, welcome to the State of the Nation. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, again, we, again. Again, yeah. We did, uh, we did have a, a relatively short interview just after you became mayor and you started to do some really good work and started to attract attention. But the real big story is that uh, you've been uh, elected as the DA um, head of KZN. Well, for, uh, as, as the premier candidate for the upcoming elections, which is, which is going to be very exciting. You've leapfrogged a few people eh, to get to that position. No, well, it's, it, there's an application process. So I've, I've gone through the interviews. I've, I've written the exam. We write exams in the DA. We write, wrote exams. Um, and it's led to, to this. So... Yeah, it's 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 different from from being the political leader of of the organisation. You know, I'm I'm putting forward the party's offer in government as yes. opposed to managing the internal affairs and and the internal voice of the organisation. So, it is a little bit different. So explain explain to us because uh, you know I was thinking about it and uh, you know, we were chatting just before we went on air. Uh, yeah, you know, I've had a few people that have had mayoral roles. And uh, I can think of two of them that have now taken it on to, well, three if you, if you include, well, Helen Zilla wasn't the mayor, but two in Herman Mashaba and Bongani Beloy, both at one stage DA mayors. Uh, Herman was famously mayor of Johannesburg and Bongani down in Midvale. And uh, they've gone off to start their own political parties. But there's a, there's a, a bit of a difference between being a mayor to, to sort of operating on the provincial or national stage, isn't there? Just to correct you, Helen was the mayor. She was she the mayor was, of Cape Town, and yeah. she was uh, voted the best mayor in the world at one stage. Okay. Um, interesting com conversation yeah. to have with her. Um, wealth of knowledge. But yes, no, there, there definitely is. Um, you know, my municipality is 1,500 square kilometers, 120,000 people. KZN is a, it's a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Um, with with a slightly more complex problems. Um, but I think the principle is the same. You know, when you take over a, a business or an entity that is not functioning, um, there are certain things that you need to do to fix it, diagnose the problem, understand it, break it down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the provincial government is just a very big beast that one has to do the same. Yeah. Now, you, you, um, KZN is uh, turns out is is a province that could be in play in the next election. I know. You know, we've obviously tracked the trends very closely. And uh, there's every chance that there's, um, for different reasons, three provinces that are up for play. You know, the, the DA is relatively secure in uh, the Western Cape, but there's a challenge from the Patriotic Alliance eating into the DA's outright majority. That one uh, we'll see in the fullness of time, whether that actually has an effect on the DA's uh, majority. But uh, the, two, the two provinces that the ANC kind of hang on grimly one is uh, up here in Gauteng, and uh, the other is in KZN, where there's been a resurgent IFP. Um, now, we know that uh, we've, we've interviewed uh, Velen Cossini Tlabisa, um, and, you know, and obviously they were part of the, the, the multi-party talks that took place uh, recently. Um, the... The, the, the sort of uh, partnership between the DA and the IFP, especially in the KZN, how solid is that partnership? So I think what, what we've realized is that, you know, we have a, a common goal, uh, and that is to change government in KZN. And the best option to do so is by working together uh, and to be mature about it, to understand that we are different political parties. Uh, we have different general objectives, views, visions, principles, policies. But there are more places where those align than they are different, which means that it's, it's easier to work together. And for us to, 
to be able to steer through what, you know, coalition politics is, is messy in general in a young democracy. We'll, we'll get to a stage where it's, where it's less messy. But we've decided to, to set a path before then, to say, well, we, we do co-govern, uh, we do are, are keeping, pe keeping them in government in a number of areas, but how do we do that in a way that is, is structured? So if we said, well, just because we vote to keep you in government doesn't mean that we shouldn't hold you accountable. But what are the terms on, on which we do that? How do we engage with each other in a constructive way as opposed to the general uh, back and forth that we see in, in South African politics uh, currently? And it's been working. Um, you know, there's, there's times when we sit down and have tough conversations about uh, mayors who are not performing or, or, or our own members who are maybe not pulling their weight in 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 keeping government moving. And and it's been good. And I, I'm really hopeful that the this partnership will, will continue into into 2024. Now tell me, obviously um, you know, recently we had the passing of uh, Mangasutu Butelezi. And uh, certainly the ANC certainly seemed to try to use this opportunity to say, guys, you know, this is what he would have wanted. Let's get back together again. You guys are kind of like the original offshoot of the ANC. And these, you know, we had um, uh, President Ramaphosa. He couldn't say you know, any more kind words about Mangasutu Butelezi, uh, despite all the things that he said 30 years ago. But the point is that uh, do you feel that there's going to be any sway on? I don't know. We're not talking about, you know, you're not part of the IFP, but you, you, you're fairly close to to the action. Do you think that the ANC has a chance of uh, luring the IFP back towards the ANC? What I can say about the IFP and the ANC relationship, especially on the ground, is that where the ANC was in government, um, which was the majority of the province at one stage, they treated local councillors, they treated uh, a IFP structures, they treated people in the legislature, so the KwaZulu Natal Parliament, very badly. Um, deliberately excluding people, deliberately abusing resources to try and undermine their colleagues in the, or, or their opposition in, in the IFP. To a point where those relationships are so sour that I don't think you can replace them. Now, it might be a little bit different in, in Parliament where people are a little bit more cordial and, and engage with each other differently. But in, in, in local government where the hard slog is, um, the ANC is, is ruthless with opposition. I know that because I was in opposition in, in two different municipalities. So I, I have hope that the IFP wants something greater for KZN um, and that the people who put them in power... Uh, also want something more than what the ANC is currently giving. And that by creating a partnership with the, the ANC, they would be abandoning what their voters are actually wanting, and that is change. So let's, let's roll back. Um, you are, your mayoralty initially got off to uh, not quite a rocky start, but you certainly found some uh, more opposition than you needed, right? There were some people that weren't happy to cede that power over to the DA. Of course, of course. Um, uh, 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 Dereta said it himself. Uh, yeah. You know, when, when he took over this, this entity, which is, you know, it's a municipality in itself, it's an entity. Uh, there's pushback, you know. There's, there's people who don't want you there. Um, there's contractors who know that they've been doing wrong. Municipal officials who know they've been abusing the system. Politicians who've been, had their fingers in the pie who have now been compromised. Uh, so yeah, people will fight back. That's that's inevitable when you create a, a state or you create an institution based on patronage and and catered deployment. But now that's that's sort of two years gone by now. Um, that seems to have faded out of the news. Is it just that we're not getting the news, or do you think that's it, or has that situation sort of calmed down where you've where you've been in charge? I, I think it has calmed down. Um, I. I do know that there will be one or two more instances where there's some internal disruptions. And I've, I've warned my caucus, um, the DA caucus that is about that, uh, and I call it a, a time of disruption. Um, because, you know, change management, you don't do it overnight. Um, you don't want to destroy an institution that is actually meant to be delivering services. So slowly, where contractors have been abusing the system, you get rid of them slowly where uh, consultants have been overcharging, you get rid of them, and where you can, you claw back the funds. Slowly, where you find officials who have been collapsing the system or they deliberately abuse the system or whatever it might be that they, they're trying to obstruct, you get rid of them. Um, 
And, you know, there is an ethical compromise that you make in terms of how fast do you do it? You know, do you, do you rip off the band-aid and, and collapse everything, uh, which is what we don't want? Or do you say, how do you, how do you do that in a structured way? So I think there is still possibly a time of disruption that will come. Uh, and that will be because of some large-scale changes that we, we have to make um, around certain contracts that we've kept for long enough. But we know that we have to to change, and we've managed them. You know, we've curtailed expenditure, we've kept people more accountable to their performance targets and things like that. So you you haven't lost, but there is a, a legacy that needs to be answered for. Because there, you know, it's not just about uh, your current position. It's it's sort of leading into there's, there's a common thread that's running through this now, because we've seen it up here in Gauteng really badly. Mm. We've seen it in the major metros, where there were coalitions governed largely led by, the, by, ANC, by, by DA mayors, and, um, but for Chwani, where they did hold sort of a balance of power, there were some really, really dirty tricks played on, uh, on those coalitions, ultimately leading to the flat-out bribing of, uh, of small party, um, you know, small parties, one or two seat parties, to collapse that coalition. And, you know, as a long-suffering Johannesburg resident, you know, the place is in a complete mess and nobody can fix it up. Uh, the, the, the ANC coalition has got no interest in fixing the place up. It's, it's pretty clear, but they've got an interest in staying in power. Now, that's what awaits you in KZN, isn't it? Because there is no doubt that the ANC, with their very small majority that they have in KZN, have done a really poor job and people seem quite fed up with it. And they are, and when you look at the numbers in, in KZN, there are more municipalities currently after the 2021 elections that are run by the IFP and the DA than there are municipalities run by the ANC. So the balance in power, if you look at the South African Local Government Association, which is essentially the union for municipalities, the balance of power sits with, is not with the ANC, it sits with the, the IFP and the DA. So just that shows you that there's been a shift um, at a local government level, and things haven't got better in KZN. In fact, they've got far worse. Kids aren't, you know, getting food at schools, unemployment. I mean, we all know the problems. But that continued decline uh, is what we need to take advantage of. And that's why I've said a few times um, on, on the tour that we've done here in Gauteng to say, you know, the, the IFP will, will be our partners in, in, in government. Um, but I'm sure they'll stand up and say the same thing, to say, well, we're playing to win, mm. um, you know. Uh, cards down, we're playing to win. We want to be the biggest, uh, the, the biggest partner in, in any coalition. Um, and that's fair game. We're in independent organizations. That we're going, that's what we're going out to do. And when the chips are on the table, say, okay, guys, how do we make this thing work for the betterment of the people? I think a lesson that we've learned, and I, th I think if I can go off on a bit of a tangent, Celia's Brink has the toughest job in the country at the moment. Mm. Forget about ESCOM CEOs, the president, you know, governors of the Reserve Bank, finance minister, Salir's Brink is, is not only grappling with a city that is, that is struggling to deliver services, but he is really fighting for the rule of law, where you have polit a politically influenced union. Um, Samu, Samu in, uh, in Swan is nothing more than an arm of, of the ANC, who is trying to destroy that city to prove a political point. Um, it's not about the wages. Um, it, that's, that's the distraction. It's the fa same fight that Jordan Hill Lewis had not so long ago with taxis in, in the city of Cape Town. And if, and if Saliers capitulates to those unruly demands and that criminality, then it's a slippery slide from there in South Africa because it sets a precedent. So he has an incredible difficult job and the citizens of Pretoria, the citizens of Tswane, have an incredible difficult time that they have to face. Do, do they want to give in to this or do they want to stand up for what is, is right? But we have the same thing that will come to us in, in KZN and that's why it's incredibly, incredibly important that we make sure that the ANC goes as far below 50% as possible and that the coalition that is formed after that of the new government is as well above 50% as, as possible. And, and we, I mean, our, our, my campaign slogan is simple, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I'll take yeah. the advantage. Go for it, yeah. It is, is that, you know, I stood in front of a crowd and I said, everyone put up one finger, and everyone did, and I said, put up another finger, and they did, and I said, then go like this. 
And it's simple. It's every DA voter must find one DA voter so that we can win. Mm. And, it, and it's as simple as that. There are 46 million people in South Africa who are eligible to vote and only 12 million did. So those 12, the, those 12 million people who did go out and vote, those are the ones who are determining our future. And KZN is no different. There are hundreds of thousands of people who are choosing not to have a say in their own future. And all across the country, voters have that opportunity to have a say in their future because they choose not to, because it's a choice not to vote. If they choose not to vote or if they choose the same thing, then, then they're putting power into the hands of people who actually don't really care. Yeah, or they're saying that they're pretty happy with the way things are. Or that. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's a point that I've been making a lot because there's, there's obviously people that watch this show that um, are very interested in politics but don't vote. So, you know, we've been uh, on that bandwagon to say to everybody, listen, this is going to be tight. We, every vote is going to count because the changes are afoot. Can, can I send them those people a message? Yeah, please. So, so in you our... You look right there. That one, number that one. one. number okay, one. Okay, number one. So the Mgeni municipality, which is the municipality that I am the mayor of, we won that municipality with 46 votes. 46 votes was the difference between, between having a majority government that is delivering or having a coalition who, who knows where that would have gone. So 46 people could have left a line, 46 people could have had a bry, 46 people could have said, you know, my vote won't count. But those 46 people made a difference. And if we have the same thing in South Africa, and if we have the same thing in Gauteng and in KZN in 2024, then we could see some really, really big change. Yeah. Imagine if the three biggest provinces economically were out of the hands of criminals. Yeah. What would that do? Well, it would be fantastic. There's a but there. There's a, there's a rider that's going to come. The one thing that's become apparent is that um, the, the current vested interests aren't going to give up without a fight. We're seeing in an ANC-led, even though it's a fairly sort of precarious majority that they have down in KZN, the sort of growth of the construction mafia, right, which is uh, not just uniquely KZN, but it seems to be better entrenched in KZN than anywhere else. And uh, we do have a situation, I always sort of liken it to uh, the ANC at national level, being like uh, the referee in a WWE wrestling <laughs> match. You know, he knows that the bad guy's poking the good guy in the eye. Yeah. And the whole crowd's screaming and the referee's making out like he can't see what they're talking about, right? National government, th that's what Salias Brink is dealing with in, in Chwane, where the national government that controls the police and a few other important functions will not do what they are meant to do. Mm. So you're going to have it really bad in KZN, aren't you? We will, but you know what? That's not something that we should be, be scared about. Yeah. We, we shouldn't fear that because it, it has to happen. It has to happen sometime. And if it's not now, then what will be left at a later stage? And the other thing is that changes happen before in many parts of the country. Mm. So I think it's a narrative that, that's pushed by the ANC to stop people from, from changing their vote or, or coalescing around yeah. one particular strong opposition because that's also a problem, splinter parties and small, small opposition. But change has happened in many places. The city of Cape Town changed hands. The Western Cape changed hands. Midval changed hands. Umgeni municipality changed hands from ANC to DA and nothing happened so far as, you know, nothing collapsed. People can still go on with their, their daily lives. Things are getting better. KZN has changed hands before. So the fear around change mm. is not something that we should be fearful of. We should be hopeful of change, but we also should be cautious about what comes next and deal with it and not be afraid of dealing with it. We can't let that control us. Yeah. Now, um, you know, what are some of your, your plans? You've obviously thought this through. You put your hand up to be uh, leader of the, the DA down in KZN, the, the sort of provincial head. You, you know, knowing that KZN is up for grabs, and just explain to the people that are watching today, what is the position in KZN as it sits now based on the 2019 outcome? So the DA got 520,000 votes uh, and the IFP got 532,000 votes. So quite similar in size, the two political parties. Uh, the ANC got 54% of the vote. Um, so they hold on to a very, very slim majority. Now, our objective is to make sure that that goes, and, and they lost 10%, by the way, in one election. So they went from 60-something to 54. 
That was about 10% of the vote that they lost. So it's very easy for them to go down a, another 10%. And they're being eaten away at by the EFF, by the DA, by the IFP, and a couple of other splinter groups um, from, from the, the ANC. So our objective is to, one, win as many votes as possible to bring them down uh, as, as far below 50% as, as possible. But our other objective is to make sure that we, we make that coalition that will come from that election as stable as possible. In other words, to convince people to say, yes, you might have um, a difference of opinion on one particular issue with the DA, but look at our track record, look at what we've done for the country, put your trust in us because the cause is greater in KZN than, what we, than, than our, the minor differences that, that might, might exist. Polling is incredibly important. Uh, I'm sure you guys look at sentiment and, and, and see where people are going, but you know, some of the latest polling is showing that the ANC in KZN sometimes goes below 40%, um, which, is, which is incredible. I mean, that, that, that itself should drive people out um, for that change that, that we need. And that's what, that's what we're pushing for. And uh, has the, the, the Zuma effect, which, which basically gave KZN to, to the ANC, do you think that has now come to a, a natural conclusion? I think the former president is, is still a political force, um, not so much in our, our country anymore, um, but in KZN, but not to the extent that, um, that we make him, him out to be. I think there are, there are far too many skeletons, there are far too many issues that um, the former president has to, to deal with for him to, to be that. I would never underestimate him. Um, he, he's, a, he's a smart politician, um, but I do think that his, his relevance uh, within the current context of the ANC in the province, uh, but also generally has, has diminished. Now, um, Chris, obviously South Africa is, uh, you know, it's a highly emotional uh, place. We, the ANC trying to keep the, the ghost of apartheid alive. And, um, you know, we've seen it, like I was saying to one of my guests, we know the election season started when the ANC started to blame everything on apartheid. That's <laughs> when you know the election season is here. But there are some realities in South Africa. That well has been so badly poisoned over hundreds of years that um, you know, the, the, the question of culture, colour is, is vital. Now, you have a little bit of a superpower, don't you, uh, compared to many of, your, uh, many of your colleagues in the DA, and that is your ability to speak Zulu. Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, it does give me me advantage. Um, but I think more than that is 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 culture, as you say. So with with language comes culture. With culture comes understanding of of how to approach things, how to how to be respectful, how to to listen, where to position yourself within society, um, in a genuine way, so that that you don't seem as if you're an outsider, but you're actually part of the fabric of of that province. And I, and I genuinely do try to do that. So. Yes, I, I do hope that my, my commitment to being, you know, fully a, a full member or a full citizen of KwaZulu-Natal in all its senses um, does help me, me get over the line. Do you think it played a role in some of your successes in Umgeni? Yes, I'd be naive not to, to think so. Um, but, but we did a lot of hard work. We were, we were in people's homes, uh, we were listening to the real message, and I'm not talking about the message that prevails in the media, um, you know, the thing that sells newspapers. We were listening to what people want, the potholes, the street lights, the jobs, the, the water leaks, the sewage running through the streets, um, and that's what's important. And, and you sort of alluded to it, you know, there's, there's, there's other issues in South Africa that are important. Uh, we have a very complex past. It's not just about apartheid and colonialism. and there's, there's very, very complex and we need to deal with those. Um, we mustn't be shy of having tough conversations about how we move forward. But I think if you I use this example um, at a school the once, I said if, if, if a, a, a black South African in rural KZN had to go home and write a list of 10 things that were the most important uh, for him or her uh, about the future of this country, and you did the same to a... Um, a white woman sitting in, in, in Houghton. And you said, write the 10 things that are the most important to you for the future of South Africa. And you had to compare those lists. You'd find that most of the stuff on that list would be the same. And I can almost guarantee you that identity politics would not feature as a strong part of that list. It'll be jobs, it'll be security, it'll be 
the future of my children to be education, healthcare, transport, the things that make a, a functional country work. And that's what we have to wade through in this election. We have to say, yes, we must deal with racism, but let us separate the issues that are affecting, the, the human issues affecting everyone in South Africa. Now, you know, with KZN comes some wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful part of the world with a lot to offer. Uh, one would imagine that, uh, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be that difficult to kick it back to some of its former glory. Absolutely. Now, I was, I was, uh, I was saying to, my, my, uh, to the staff in the municipality the other day, no, we were talking about tourism, I think it was, and I said, you know, all we have to do with this road is, is grade it. And you suddenly open up the two bed and breakfasts, the, there's a waterfall along that route, uh, and something else, a, a riding track. And I said, grade it. So they graded the road and suddenly you had a whole lot of institutions or a whole lot of businesses that could operate much better. And I said, well, what's missing here? Well, I said, well, no one knows where to find them because no one knows the name of this road. So what did we do? We put up the street sign again. So simple, basic things. And, and, and tourism in particular in our province, because it, it reaches into the rural towns and villages. It, it goes beyond just, just Durban, you know, the Durban beaches that everyone knows so famously or infamously now. But... That is such a golden opportunity for us, and it's a quick win. And that brings dignity to people, because we, we, we can't expect South Africa to change without creating meaningful employment. And it's a quick win for us. Yeah. Now, you know, we, we mentioned it already, and uh, you, know, you don't want to sort of overplay the hand, but it's, it's not going to be without a fight. It's going to be, you know, even if you got your dream and uh, the ANC went down to 40%, as some of the polling suggests, uh, that forty percent is not going to lay down easily. Uh, what is the current st state of the relationship? Is it as adversarial as what it is up here in Gauteng between uh, the ANC and the coalition, especially sort of the DA? So, so there are some good people in the ANC. Those good people need to make tough decisions. And, and one of my campaign themes is, is around courage. And this is Luce Isabin, courage. Because it's people like that um, within the ANC who are going to have to be courageous and, and make bold decisions. And to step away from, from what they know. Many people sit down with you outside of the chamber and, and, and tell you that was wrong. We shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have taken that position. But have never been courageous enough to take that fight. Uh, to the public or, or to a platform that is recorded. So I think it's to work with those, those people, um, there's organizations, there's, there's levers within the existing party, but also within their networks to leverage those, to say, listen, force them in, in a better direction. But the other thing is that, you know, like we found on a municipality and, and like others have found in other places, is that yes, there, there may be 40% let's say, of people who, who vote for, and that is the power of the ANC after elections. That doesn't necessarily translate into 40% 40 40 of people who are adversarial towards a new government. Um, it means that there's 40% of the people in the province that you need to speak to to reassure, to say, yes, change has happened. There's nothing to be scared of. Just like we are saying to ourselves, listen, let us force change. There's nothing to be scared of afterwards. So, so fear shouldn't be what drives ANC voters, and fear shouldn't be what drives opposition voters. It should be hope on both sides. Now, you've had uh, two years of, of, of holding office. You've, uh, through your unique offering, has, have got probably a disproportionate amount of publicity. But, uh, you know, there, I don't suppose 10 years before we could have uh, foreseen, you know, a young white male running a, a rural uh, um, municipality. With that experience and with your new role, and, you know, if you just zoom out, how, what is your take on the South African position? Are you optimistic? Do you think that uh, South Africa can overcome some of these uh, self-inflicted wounds that we are suffering with at the moment? I'm a realist, but I'm also an optimist. So I, I do believe that hope exists in pockets currently. There are, there are pockets of excellence, there are pockets of hope. And I don't just mean DA-run municipalities or DA-run provinces. There are institutions, there are people, there are uh, government departments even that are doing incredible work. Um, but there comes a time where even the best 
can no longer continue with, within a, a situation or a broader context uh, if it does not allow them to do so. So I am optimistic. Um, I do want to believe in hope. I do believe that there is more right with our country than what is wrong with our country. But I also know that they will get to a stage where you can't, you can't claw things back. Um, you, you can't fix certain things. Uh, and there's a book on your, on your shelf here, if you don't mind, this one here. Oh, right, yes. Um, and the realization of, of this means the total destruction of, um, of the institutions that are supposed to protect our democracy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's the future of, uh, of uh, South African politics right there. Young people that are prepared to put their hands up. They understand uh, the challenges that we have in the country and they're actually doing something about it. The least we can do is support them by voting. So, Chris Pappas, thank you so much for joining us on the State of the Nation today. It's been great to have you and thank you for fitting us in. To everybody that, uh, that, that watched this, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll keep on bringing them to you and hearing from our politicians and holding them to account. Chris Pappas, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.